Hey YouTube world, welcome to my YouTube channel. Well today we're going to take a look at the Osmo Action and Freewell ND filters. Why would I put ND filters on an action camera? Well I'm going to show you really quick. It's to get cinematic motion blur, which looks really cool. Okay, before I get started, there's two things I have to pass on to you. One is from me and one is from Freewell. The first thing is, if you want to use an action camera and get cinematic motion blur, you must use the 180 rule, which means if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, which this entire video is in, then you must double the 30, which equals 60, and make the 60 your shutter speed, so 1 60th of a second. If you try to do that without an ND filter, it's impossible, it won't work. You have to put an ND filter on to darken the amount of light coming in. Second thing I have to tell you is Freewell said, a lot of people don't know this, so you better pass it on. So Freewell said, guys, when you put ND filters on your Osmo Action, do not jiggle them all over the place because they work by getting light into them. So if you put a filter, an ND filter over top of the Osmo Action and you shake it all over the place like this, well then it's going to be jerky image. So what you have to do is just move it normally like this and this. You'll see in this video here, I'm going to fly with an FPV drone, an RC car, uh, a few other things and you're going to see how smooth it is. Oh, I should mention, the RC car is probably not going to be as smooth because the RC car takes a lot of vibrations and that will give you really fast jigglies and you're going to see exactly what Freewell says don't do. So you might notice that the image bounces around. But anyways, let me just show you. The first one is going to be this FPV drone. So here we go. I've got the Osmo Action attached to one of my FPV drones and uh, I'm going to fly it without an ND filter and then I'll put an ND filter on it. Now I'm going to drive my skateboard and I'm going to take the Osmo Action and film me low to the ground and you'll notice that there's no motion blur but then I'm going to put an ND filter on and you'll see cinematic motion blur. All right here I'm moving the Osmo Action around my skateboard. You should see no motion blur because I have no ND filter on it. The ground you should almost look detailed. And here I'll just move it around. Let's see, do you see any motion blur? You should see motion blur because the shutter is going pretty slow. I have an ND32 on here, so it's kind of dark and uh, hopefully you see the motion blur. Now for the next test, we have the Traxxas Rustler and I've attached the Osmo Action to it and you can see there's no filter on it. So when I turn it on, it's just going to film in its normal action mode with the bright sunlight coming in. And you will notice that the pavement, you can actually see almost every hole in the pavement as it whips like at 50 or 60 or 80 kilometers an hour. Now, when I put on the filters, that's not gonna be the case. Everything's gonna look super smooth. So uh, check it out. All right, the next test is I have the Osmo Action down here. Hopefully you can hear me over all this water. So, and what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna film it just automatically. I'll hit record, the water's coming down, so that's motion. And then I'll put on a ND filter and we'll see if it changes it in any way. Let's try that. All right, the next test is a polarization test because you see the sun is right there. So usually you use a polarized filter 
when the sun is like at a 90 degree angle to what you're filming. Right now, it's kind of shady here, so it may or may not work. So I'm going to put a polarized filter, you know, a circular polarized filter on, and I'm going to turn it a quarter turn and a quarter turn and a quarter turn and a quarter turn, and we'll see if you see a difference as I turn it each turn. Let's try it. A circular polarizer is on here. Watch when I turn the polarized filter and watch what happens to the image. Okay, we see lots, but look what's happening to the light. All of a sudden the rocks are getting dark. Ah, the polarized light is being filtered. And if I keep turning it, keep turning it, each quarter turn, and now I'm getting, wow, look at that, I brought back everything. So when you're doing photography, you may want this sort of look or you may want that sort of look. It depends. Do you want this or do you want this? I'm just spinning the polarized filter here. All right, so you've watched the video this far and you've seen the Osmo Action with ND filters for taking videos. But what if I put these Freewell ND filters and polarized filters? What if I use them for photography? Well, let me show you a quick unboxing, show you what you get. And when I come back, I'm going to show you how to use this for photography. And it's pretty sweet. Check this out. Freewell filters for the Osmo Action. Here is the box they come in and it's an eight pack. Let me show you what comes in the box. Well, of course you have to get a Freewell microfiber cloth. I use these on my glasses as well as my lenses, but you get this really cool envelope. Look at this. It's an envelope. It's like, Hey, it's my birthday, but let me show you what's inside. You get a Freewell lifetime warranty card and this this document here would happen to be the holy grail of what's included in the package, besides the filters of course. This here shows you uh, your standard day filters. These are the four that are included, but what's really good is if you're new to filters, it gives you a nice little indication of how to use them. And over here is your bright day filters for a sunny day. Once again, these are included and it tells you how to use them, which is really good. And finally, you have the filters that come in this really nice case. Now check this case out. I like this. It's not a snap case. These are magnets. You know, why am I showing the case? Because the case is pretty cool. They just magnetize and click into place. That's pretty sweet. Anyways, let's take a look at the filters really quick. There they are. I'm not going to take them out because I'm going to put them on the camera and try them out, but you get eight filters. So you have the normal day and you have the bright day filters. And they do include the circular polarized filters for with the ND filters as well as by itself right here. So they are circular, which means you can spin it and get the correct polarization, which is really nice. Let me show you how it goes on your Osmo Action. Here we have the Osmo Action with the clear filter on here. I don't even think it's a UV filter because I don't think DJ I spent that much money, but let's take that off. It's probably just a piece of glass and it's got a ton of threads because it is waterproof underneath. And here I have an ND64 that is circular polarized and uh, you just screw it on. And if you're going to go in water, make sure you screw it on tight. And for a circular polarized filter, you would just spin the polarization. So obviously you would probably use these a lot more for photography and not videography. But if you kept your camera stable on a tripod and filmed in one direction, you would definitely use these. Now I know many of you are going to ask about taking photos. Yes. If you're going to use an ND filter or a polarized filter, they are fantastic for photos. Now, what I can do on the Osmo Action is I can take a photo of this water coming down and if I put a dark, dark filter over the front, I can leave the shutter open longer and that should give me a really cool effect on the waterfall. So I'm going to try that now. All right, for photos, let me put this in photo mode here. That's video, HDR, and slow motion, photo mode. There we go. All settings are on auto, I believe. Let me just check. Yeah, it's on auto. All right. So let's snap a photo and see what that looks like. There we go. Now what happens is there's lots of light coming in, so the water will be stopped in time. But we don't want that. We want to make the water look like it's silky, milky smooth. So we're going to change the setting. All right. So the plan is to slow down the shutter. So I'm going to try an ND64 that's polarized. So I'm going to put this filter on and we'll try to slow down the shutter so that this water does not stop in time and actually looks milky smooth. Let's give it a shot. Okay. The filter's on. Let's take a look at the back of the camera. I'm going to spin the polarization. There we go. I can lighten it up. I want to light up that water a bit. Uh, right about like that. I think that's good. Let's see. I want to keep the rocks dark, but I want to bring the water out. So let's try it. Let's try it like that right there. Okay. So now what I have to do is put it in manual mode. Go to the side, go into manual. I want to keep an ISO of 100. So that is the least amount of noise. And down here is my shutter speed. There we go. I've got it at one second right now. And you can see it shows you on the screen 
what one second will look like and it doesn't look bad so let me try one second let's get rid of that and uh, take a shot staying open for one second and hopefully that turned out well now let's try a longer shutter the longer you keep the shutter open the brighter the water will be and the more silky smooth the water will be so let's go over here go down to one second let's go 1.3 seconds a little brighter let's try even 1.6 there we go. 1.6. Let's try that. So get rid of you. And 1.6. These rocks are a little too bright up here, but I'll try it. 1.6 seconds. What do I get? There we go. All right, that looked pretty good. Let's go crazy. 1.6. Let's go up to 2.5 seconds. That's kind of wild, but we'll try it. Everything's going to be very bright, but we're going to have super milky smooth water. Actually, you see the top of the screen? That's probably a little too bright, but let's try it anyways. Just look at the water. Let's see what we get. Two seconds. That should look pretty good. All right, so I hope my time here at the waterfall has proven well, and you've seen the polarization, you've seen the photos, and you saw what an ND filter can actually do for your photography. All right, so pretty amazing what you can achieve when you put ND and polarized filters on an action camera. Action cameras are pretty simple, but when you put these on, you get a whole new life in your action camera. And that's what us on YouTube, that's what we do because we want to make our videos look better. So we will add ND filters to make things look even much more cool for you guys, the viewers, by using ND filters. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't checked out these filters, they've been out since the Osmo Action came out, and I'll put a link below where you can get them. I don't know if there's any sale or coupon or anything, but I'll put a link below. And uh, definitely, you, you need these if you have the Osmo Action and you wanna take your Osmo Action to the next level. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And if you're still a bit confused about using an Action camera with ND filters and you have some questions, just post them below and I'll try to answer them. All right, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video. See ya.